Moving beyond the last subject, we're going to be now going into the goals of Zaref in this five-part analysis of his character. We went over his the, the inspiration that I could really see as the most uh, plausible areas of him, given that Hiromashima was a fan of Berserk and how many similarities he has to Griffith. Uh, and then going beyond that, we had the backstory. And now we're going to be talking about Zaref's goals. What exactly did he set out to do? And Zaref actually had multiple goals throughout the story of of his life because you know there, there were aspects that altered you know as time went by you know we we had to start where he didn't really have anything going on after he um his first goal because obviously his first goal was to try and bring back natsu his brother who had died during a you know just a random dragon attack and he lost his parents and his little brother during that uh, encounter but from that, he decided that he wanted to figure out how to bring his brother back to life. Went through the the long, extensive research of trying to figure out exactly, like, the boundaries of life and death, uh, if they're reversible, and it, exactly just the concept of them, you know, what comes after. Zaref was very much, uh, you know, both intrigued by the subject, but at the same time, you know, striving from that to reach his goal, trying to bring back his brother, the, the young family member who he had very much, you know plagued his mind the fact that he didn't have him anymore and between that point and getting the curse there were there was a long period of of nothing for him of him just wandering around you know killing people without meaning to just agony in all aspects to to his being he just wasn't wasn't doing well and and until he kind of like came to terms with the situation that he found a really dispersible post that was to explore magic to to really like expand out his research to do his studies uh you know obviously that that probably was like his smallest goal i'd say but obviously one but probably the most impactful and just because of that it's what really led out to his capabilities you know him having so many different magics under his belt mastering black magic in general and living magic uh, because after that point, you know, he he decided, you know, he wanted to die. He was uh, he didn't like what he had done. That was, you know, goal number three, uh, the end of his life. And from that, he ended up creating the Aetherius, you know, creating an entire species of of beings, intelligent creatures out of raw energy, purely for the point of dying. And because of that, Zareph you know, caused all this, these other problems in the world, all this other uh, discord, chaos, and mayhem. But it really wasn't him, it wasn't like a, you know, a character, I mean, like, I'm going to create all these monsters and let them out in the world to, to do whatever for, you know, whatever reason, X, Y, and Zs. They were failures of Zareph's attempt at suicide. They were what he wanted to end him. He wasn't thinking exactly about what they could do in the long run to humanity. He was only concerned about himself, but at the same time, it it really kind of like opened up a a moment of selfishness with him. But we we know he's not entirely selfish. It was just that kind of like deep rooted want to to end it all, to to you know to get that resting place, to have you know to be freed from the curse, and uh, that always kind of like made Zarepa a, a little bit more of an interesting character in my opinion. Because usually when you have these villains, they have they have one big goal. They have one thing that they they really want to do, and uh, you know they stick to it. You know there's maybe a little bit on the side, but Zareph Zareph had multiple goals, and because of these multiple goals, it added uh, an extra layer of what he wanted to do. Like um, for instance, you know what we talked about during the the point of his story when he when he wanted to to get through everything with the Neo Eclipse, but when he thought that Natsu was capable of killing him with uh, Igneal's power, you know a power from uh, someone who was dead he he was ready just to to let that go down and to to let it end to end his journey and at the same time like afterwards when he's like no it didn't work i i need to keep going i need to you know finish what i started what my plan was it just made his character it seem very human in the aspect of even though he has this very large goal he has this big idea of what he wants to do for for others he still is his own person he has this uh, you know this want for his own happiness which was very interesting uh for him but you know, then we you know led up to what happened when he started to really kind of grasp that humanity again after centuries you know forming the uh, the alvarez empire and pretty much becoming this you know this deity like icon of their of their people but 
he ended up meeting Mavis, who he thought he would be able to to walk down this eternal like path of of just suffering and and, and death with, because she also had the uh, the curse of contradiction, the curse of Ankh-Saram. and that obviously not going too well for him, and uh, and really just kind of creating a uh, you know a new idea, a, a goal that he wanted that he didn't think was possible to obtain, even with everything he had and everything he was capable of. Being with Mavis was not, it wasn't plausible. Because when you look at something like everything else in his life, he could die and that would be the end of it. It, it was still, in theory, something he was trying to figure out, but something that, you know, was causing problems. He wanted to bring back Natsu. He, he did in a way, but he still couldn't be with him. He still couldn't be with his brother because of, of you know, his curse. This curse that literally, like, radiates death. But, and going towards the Neo Eclipse... He's able to do so many things that he wanted to do all at once, but in the process of that, you know, he's going to be born centuries before Mavis. Mavis is not even going to be possible for him to ever be with because of the fact that in order to achieve his large-scale goals, he has to sacrifice this thing about him. And you saw that in the moment where he, uh, when he finally took Fairy Heart from Mavis and he says, you know, there was nothing tying him back anymore. It was like a, a moment of relief, but of, of sadness, like, completely layered on top of it. Because even though, you know, he, even though he wants this, that like he knows, you know, I need, to, I need to do this to save humanity, I can get rid of the curse, I can be with my brother again. But his love for Mavis really kind of was hindering down along the way. We saw he definitely had a soft spot for it during moments of uh, Avar Irene draining magic from her body. You know, the, clearly her suffering, Mavis' suffering was causing Xerif distress because over it all, similar to how he had still, you know, he still had emotions towards his little brother who he cared about. He loved Mavis and he had a very deep rooted, you know, emotional tie to her. And all this thing, all these things about, you know, knowing that if he accomplishes his goal, he can never be with her. And that was always, you know, very detrimental to just the way that he saw things. And you could, you can see it again throughout the arc whenever he, you know, he has like, these small interactions with Mavis that that really led him to 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 realize his fate. What some things that he wanted, he would have to obtain. He would have to sacrifice one that he one that probably meant the most to him as a singular piece. But you know all this other things and and trying to think about humanity and others really in a, in his mind outweighed what he wanted personally and. Then you get stuff like defeating Acnologia. We we know that with Acnologia, he he knew he was too powerful, and he was he was much too too far beyond Zerif's capabilities. Even with the Spriggan Twelve, the Alvarez Empire having over a million soldiers and all these extremely powerful uh, wizards, and even getting Fairy Heart, he knew that even with all these things, Acnologia was beyond him. Acnologia was beyond what he was capable of. And he, he figured out a way to do it, to go back in time to before he became so powerful and to take him out then. And with that, when, when you couple all these things together to bring back Natsu, explore magic, to kill himself, to be with Mavis, to defeat Acnologia and, and to save humanity, and in, even in there, uh, all these at the same time, to get a fresh start, to, to really not only create a new age for humans, but to also redo his life, just make a new age for him, a new beginning, because he... The, the thing about the world, like, uh, when he talks about the world rejecting him, and he says that he's gonna, you know, reject the world, he, he sees that uh, later on when he talks about how this isn't his world. He, he doesn't believe that a world that is against him is the place for him. It's not the one that he wants to be in, and not the one he believes he wants to be in. He wants to be in the happier world where he's not plagued by this curse. And, again, like, when you tie all these things together, when you, you know, make a big spider web of Zareth and all his goals and all his, uh, all his aspirations, he accomplished these. He accomplished practically everything except for getting a new star. I mean, even in a way, he still did. Because when you think he brought Natsu back, uh, he still explored and uh, created new magics. He, he got, and in the end, he died. He died with Mavis. Acnologi was defeated and humanity was saved. They were all indirectly done by him. Because without, uh, without creating Natsu, or I guess bringing him back, without, uh, you know, making all these obstacles, without all the influence that he caused, that Zareph, uh was, you know, was able to, to pretty much form. And all these characters that, uh, because they wanted to appease Zareph, they wanted to do these things for Zareph, 
that they were uh, they were obstacles for Natsu and uh, and Cass to overcome to get stronger to you know to keep moving forward to keep rising up the ladder and it's because of that that in the end and that everyone that Natsu met along the way that Zareth was able to still in a lot of ways accomplish his goals because as I said you know Natsu came back to life even though he was a he was a demon and there's still some troubles there it seems with the Aetherius. Um he still explored magic. He created new beings. He then, then, then in process, curses. And he still died. He died with Mavis. Akinologi was defeated by Natsu and co. But also, not only that, he was defeated thanks to Fairy Sphere. And you think about this. You think about this for specifically. Without the influence that he gave Mavis, teaching Mavis something like law, teaching him magic, so... Uh, her, Yuri, Preach, and uh, and Warren could create the Fairy Tale Guild. If you subtract Zara from there, they never would have done that. So z they never would have had Fairy Sphere to hold Zara or to hold Acnologi in place. Nor would you have the Grimoire Heart because Hades never would have left the guilds in, or even in that case, probably Sylph Labyrinth to I must say the Labyrinth, Labyrinth to to create Fairy Tale to then later make Grimoire Heart where he had all these other members, because Merity was obviously a big aspect in all this by using her Magolti sense to link everyone on the continent. And again, if you subtract that both of those things, you have no continental-wide unison raid to power up Fairy Sphere, and you have no Fairy Sphere. So they wouldn't have any way to hold Acnologi in place, nor would they have had anyone to fight him um, within the space between time because of the, the Dragon Slayer plan. The Dragon Slayer plan was... Created by him and 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 um and Anna, and because of that, they were only able to do it because of the Eclipse Gate, the Eclipse Gate that Zareph created. And so, if if you take away again Zareph in so many ways, they never would have defeated Actonologi. Actonologi would have had free range to do whatever he wanted. And because of that, they were able to also save humanity. Zareph indirectly did all these things. And when you think about how you know he wanted uh he wanted a fresh start, he wanted to start over. When he and Mavis died, they reincarnated a year later, and they ended up getting back together. They have a new start, no longer plagued by, you know, the the events of their life, the dark aspects that really kind of made it impossible to be together, and just kind of, like, ends up with this thing that um, that they are fated to continuously meet and to, uh, to reunite. And I think that was a really interesting fact with Zareph, because it wasn't like, oh, this, uh... Uh, something like Aizen and Bleach being like, yeah, I orchestrated everything so, uh, you know, Ichigo would, would do these things. It's not like that. It's it's more like Zareph indirectly did it because he didn't think, oh, I'm going to have all these plans. I'm going to, I'm going to, everything is just going exactly what I wanted. It's more of his presence and things that he did indirectly. Like, he didn't create Natsu as E&D to take down Acnologia or to fight these other guilds and to, you know, do all the things he did through the story. He created him to die, uh, to kill himself. He wanted Natsu to, to kill him. And because of that, all these things that led up to it, in a way, that it did kind of kill him. It did kind of, you know, leave that opening so Mavis could, you know, they could figure out the, uh, you know, a loophole within the curse of Ankh Saram. And because of that, it really just, it makes Zareph in this spot of this forsaken hero. Because Nansu obviously is the main character, Lucy's the female lead, and they obviously had large aspects to play in the series, but you gotta keep in mind how much of that really is because of Zareph. How much of that is Zareph, like, influenced and impacted? I wanted, I, I'm excited to do the one where it's more of Zareph's influence, but I wanted to go over his goals because I think the fact that he, that there's so many aspects of the story that you can tie back to Zareph, it's only now in uh, the 100 Years quest that we're getting areas that are going on that don't seem to be Zareph tied to. And I thought that was really interesting that Zareph was this this villain, this this antagonist that all these roads led back to, but it's not like he wanted it to be that way. Again, it's not like Aizen, where Aizen was like, you know, everything was part of my plan, I formulated all this. Zareph, it was much more like every single time he tried to do something and it failed, it created a road that just kept splitting off and splitting off and having all these different uh, adverse effects throughout the years. And they all just led back to him and he didn't want them to, but that's what they did. But in the end, all these all these roads that he he tried to, you know, pretty much create for his own purpose that ended up as failures, you know, eventually conjoined back to the end that he wanted, which was very nice. It was very, uh, very heartwarming to see that for Zareph. 
And again, I, I love Zareb's character, one of my favorite antagonists and villains of all time. Uh, I think his story is great. I love all the aspects throughout his journey and just how much of his uh, how much of his influence without him actually doing it affects the story. Because there's so much it's just characters, other fanatics of Zareb trying to do things for him. Uh, things like the, the demons that he created that just kind of like take it upon themselves to, to do all these things in hopes of eventually appeasing Zareb as, uh, you know, they have all these kind of ways that, that really just, when characters do it, they, they're doing it for Zareb, and it ends up leading towards Zareb's end goal, but not in the way he wanted, which I think was really nice storytelling for him. You know, he, he always had this kind of, you know, way of, uh, the way like his, his contradictions kind of like worked in the story because of how, you know, the curse affected his mind and his actions. And how, in, in a lot of ways, his failures ended up leading to his success, which is, again, a very interesting aspect to him. And the contradiction of his own failures led to success, which is, I think is just a really cool way that his story was told. So leave a comment below in the comment section. Tell me about Zareph. Tell me what you think about the character, how how much you know, you enjoyed him. You know, I, I really love Zareph. I think you can tell by all the time that I've talked about him. i still got two more videos to do. Um, we're going to do ones on... Uh, on his influence within the series itself, all the things that like that he impacted, and the contrast to the main character. Um, that's going to be really good, and uh, to really kind of go over beyond that because this one was goals. Influence is going to be more like deeper, like the like individual characters that he, you know, that he ended up causing them to go down their journey. I, I might I might save that for for last and then do contrast the main character decks because that one I think is really cool because there's so many small aspects between Natsu and Zareph that are kind of like paralleled which I think will be really fun to to look over. Other than that, uh, like I said, drop a comment below. I'd really appreciate it. Thumbs up the video, but for the like button and the subscribe button and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed and I thank y'all for listening. Bye.